Hello and welcome to our second look at Millennia. We're starting off a brand new campaign today for launch day. We are very, very excited about it. Hoping to get some good starting locations. We've had a couple of miss rolls already this morning. So we're going to be kicking off again. For those of you joining us who don't know anything about this game, it is the new Paradox Civ based game. Civ style game. Uh, where you often end up with cities a lot more kind of specialized than they normally are. In, in, in a traditional Civ game where you kind of get a little bit of everything. In this game, it's a lot more focused and zoned in. We're going to be starting on a huge continent map, a random map seed. All random characters, all master AI. And we're going to hope for a good roll here this morning. Fingers crossed for a good roll. Surely boobs should be the map seed. I mean, it's not a bad idea. Lunch day. Hey, now this is what I am talking about for a nice little starting location here. There's not a lot you can really do with hunting later on, but starting off with three hunters right here. We got some farmland on this side. We got cows up here. I feel like this is a much better option. We are starting, I believe, as the French. Montpellier. This is French, right? Where are we? Are we France? This looks like France to me. We're also on the water, which is fun. Not a lot to the north. To the south. A mixed difference. A mixed bag. French cheese, you cheese so hard that you became French. Uh, we are going to be trying a tall playthrough because our last playthrough was very militaristic. So I'm going to start off with some workers. I think food stockpile, farm and plantation. Yeah, I think workers for a clay pit early on is the way to get it. Our region here is idle. We can go for the Dolomite to help us grow. The town center to get us government XP or the palisade to get us walls. Uh, we have two war bands that looks like wandering around. If I want to go tall, I'm probably going to need a Dolomit first because we don't have, we can't really grow in these two water tiles. So we'll give that a shot. Playing tall, you can't evolve Napoleon even if you're French. So no Empire Civic Stream. Hello, hello. But a village is holding an auction to sell and trade its people's wares. Five production on Montpellier or 50 wealth. We'll take the production. Get us a nice early start here. And a landmark. Excellent. We got lots of mountains to the south. What other goodies? I'm going to guess that's the Sahara Desert. Mountains, mountains, mountains. All right, well. A defensive position, at least. Deep forests all over here, too. Pick up some plus one food. On the early. Oh, we're in an interesting little area here. Ooh, okay. Some olives, some grapes. If we choose to grow out this way, we could set up a nice farming village here, probably. And our culture power is ready. Do we want to create an early second town? Or boost all resources generated? I suppose a second town, if I built it right here, it would completely surround all of these hunting locations and be on a nice little hill. Limoges, our new town. Montpellier grows. Some fish. Uh, all of these will probably be good for mining in a different age. Oh my god, look at this. And we got more wheat up here as well. This isn't too bad. I think we could probably work with all this. 
dare I say. All right, the clay pit will get us some early improvement points. The hunting camp will just get us... Do, 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 do. I actually can't remember. Bones? Would get us bones, so it would get us a little bit of extra wealth. We don't have any forests around. So logging is pretty much out of the question. So I actually think that a clay pit, which we can only place in one location, is not the worst idea for us. W Slayer, thank you for the follow. Hello. Welcome to the agency. Welcome to a little millennia. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. We're in quite a little corner here. Scouting defenses, tribal others, farming. Uh, we do have a lot of good farming stuff nearby, so... I am a little curious. Oh, it's going to take us so long to get there, though. Let's pick up tribal elders first so that we can get some tech. As it never seems to go astray. Are there no game sounds? Oh, my goodness. My game sounds were on mute. How embarrassing. Another tribal village. And we are stuck in a forest. Been looking forward to this game for a while. We've had one little playthrough with it and enjoyed it very thoroughly. So far, I would say so good. Mm, knowledge or culture? Let's go early knowledge here. Keep us ahead of the game maybe a little bit. Technically, I don't need a warband, so... I'm going to save up for the better government stuff here. Nice. Great big expansion of territory here. Uh, we need a plantation for those olives so we can start working on farming now. I didn't expect that to grow so quickly. But I'm extremely glad that it did. Let us make do 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 government XP or plus one knowledge. I think we'll go straight for the knowledge to start. Seeing as we got that early boost, I wouldn't mind staying a little bit ahead of the game. Mountains to the south of me, forest to the left. Here I am stuck in the middle with you. And a desert up here. We are actually in a beautiful little corner. If this territory grows one more, I could put a village here. And I could make it a forestry village. And that'd be real good. Real, real good. All right, do we save up for knowledge or do we get the plus one improvement points? Great debate. Oh, we do also get meat from these hunting camps, which I did not realize. Meat and bone. All right, so we're hunting and we're digging clay. We have a lot of things here that could take improvement points. A dock spawns utility ship, gives us exploration XP as well. Oh, I like that. I think we'll probably go for that knowledge boost first, so. Knowledge if you want to rush the first ages. Yeah, I'm not too worried about rushing the first ages. Hello? The Swedes? But I do think we might as well go for that knowledge. Greetings, Swedland. Oh my god, they stole the Sahara Desert from me. How dare they? What absolute monsters. Well, we're definitely not getting the Age of Bronze first. Uh, 
Uh, you know what? It's worth using a Eureka, I would argue, once per age. So we'll just pick up farming. And you know what? I'm going to actually pick up scouting as well. Damn, I didn't think um, the computer would be in here so quickly on me. This is all jungle. Wild. Local reforms, more knowledge. If you stay close to Sweden too long, their nobles will overthrow their king. Just saying. <laughs> first thoughts. I really like it. Uh, we did we did a, a short playthrough last week of the first six ages, and I had a really great time. Some of the graphics are kind of outdated, but um, it's not really like a problem in a 4X strategy game. The game's got some balance passes that need to be done. Is this Sweden here already? Oh, no way. That would be so close. All right, Age of Bronze. All right, oral history. Who do we have? They are on top of us. Wildly on top of us. Um, let's see. Let's see. If I just save up a little bit, we can get that farm started for those olives. Dude's got roads going already. Very interested in this release. I bet. Yeah, I've enjoyed it so far from what we've seen. Age of Bronze. Barbarian Warlords may appear. All right. So this needs, what is it? Plantation. So that'll give us some slightly better food. Linko Pig. I think they saved up 30 government XP and went straight for a second settler. Unless that's their capital. Which if so, their capital is awfully close to me. It might very well be. Super close. All right. Well, we keep growing. Need something to play while I'm working from home? It's a good choice. Your forces are too close to our borders. Well, your cities are too close to my cities. How do you feel about that? Huh? Punk? Age of Bronze. All right. We get our first national spirits. Uh, we've been beaten out of warfare. We've been beaten out of most things, to be honest. Ancient seafarers. God King Dynasty. Erects monuments in honor of their nation's ruler. Masters of stonework. Costs less for them to work and build with stone. Diplomacy would give us Olympians. Let's take a look at these. Last time we played, we took Raiders. So what are the other options? Naturalists do food from foraging houses. Reduced cost of expansion into forests and deep forests. That's not a bad choice given where we are. Extra defense in forests. Housing generates food, garden houses. Forests are cheaper to move through. Forests. Okay, so these guys are really forest characters. God King Dynasty reduces the cost of expansion into hills. Cheaper stone cutters, cheaper quarries, bonus limestones. Unlocks the pyramid. 
influence and culture. Ah, so more of a cultural victory, I guess. Upgrades one of your pyramids into a pyramid tomb. Wow, okay, pretty cool. And then Olympians. Host the Olympic Games to get a variety of XP rewards. Unlocks the Hippodrome. Allows you to spawn a lot of envoys. Okay, so my options are basically forest or hills. The hills are pretty minimal. The forests are pretty bountiful. Folks, I think we're going naturalists. Wild hunters, massive bonkers, seeing the deer lines. Bow hunters, resources of elephants. Into scrubland tiles. Bonus food for meat goods. Oh, yeah. Bonus improvement points from bone and ivory. Ah, uh, that's not a bad idea either. Uh, we wouldn't get the bonus XP off the bat for that because it's already been taken. It would give us really nice defensive units so we could play defensively. Expansion into scrubland. Housing generates food. Food for meats. Exploration XP. You're also exploration XP. I feel like if we're building tall, something like God King Dynasty makes more sense. But I don't know how much stone we're going to get here. One, two, three, four tiles of workable stone. And then everything else is bad. This is all scrubland. There's potential for like a good fishing village up here, maybe. Kind of. A decent fishing village. Special archer units allows you to hunt on neutral tiles, so you can expand even outside your territory. Interesting. Massive bonkers seeing the deer tiles. Yeah, I mean, I am really inclined to do that, especially with all of this scrubland, because I don't think he's going to come down across this desert. He's more likely to go north. That does seem to be the way that he has decided to grow. All right, dudes, we're gonna take we're gonna take wild hunters. Rough not to get that early, but such is life. Uh, what's cool is we get to spend exploration XP on it, which is not something I expected. Into the age of bronze, mining could be good. Also spawns a pioneer, which lets us build outposts. Shipbuilding. Officials. Hold on here. Diplomacy. Claim territory. Envoys. Community gives us cranes for improvement points. Saw pits. The mills to convert wheat or rice into flour. The kiln. Converts clay into improvement points, so we could actually go for community. would probably be good. Culture and knowledge. Grapes and wine. Wool, cotton. Flax or olives into cooking oil. Uh, I think let's start community. Feels strange that none of these use meat. Early on, but... We'll have to see. Digging the game so far. I'm glad to hear. I really like it from, from as I said, the little bit we played. I had a very good experience with it starting off. All right. To the south. How are we looking? We're actually kind of a little bit low on food. A work camp would get us production and engineering XP. Wouldn't be a terrible choice. I feel like we should be getting more food than we are. Oh, the hunting camp actually doesn't produce food. It only produces these goods. 
Which is worth three food. Never mind. One meat, three food. Wow. Olive is worth two food. Plus two food. Okay, so those are worth four. These are worth three. So getting another hunting camp would probably solve my food issue. Yeah. Pretty much. It did kill my production speed, though. Because we don't have anybody working the hills anymore. Ah ha 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 ha. All right, we're going to go food stockpile. Yeah, we'll keep them in that. For now. I was on the toilet. What path did we go with? Uh, we went with hunters. Because it seemed like there was some hunting to do. Dude, I am hella boxed in. Also. Oh, no, we have to get reveals elephant. Okay. This might be a quick match today. Sweden's going to war with us. A barbarian warlord snuck in here. I didn't even see that happen. All right, I'm going to start pulling back some armies. I think these guys are going to punish me if I do not. He's got an army of 74 already. Hunters from France have started imbuing their meats with spices. Plus one bonus culture for meat goods. Oh my God, dudes. All right. That's massive for us. There's another faction up here too. That's huge. We're going to start generating a crazy amount of cultural XP now. So being boxed in is not as bad if you plan on being tall from the start. That's kind of my thought, right? Like as long as I can build up some defenses against them, we should be okay. Uh, so they've got two vassals, three vassals, and um, only one city. We have one city. <laughs> Which, to be clear, means we've gotten pushed in pretty quickly. I think I'm going to have to try and make another town somewhere up here. Maybe like here and then I could put a village here and make it a fishing village. Yeah, that might work for us. AI might be much more hostile. I think now is the perfect time to panic. Greece. Hello, Greece. You're in my way, Greece. Walls are dead. Militia is still okay. Their army is 74. Two raider ba- Oh, no. Greece took raiders early on. Uh, so maybe Sweden being here is not the worst thing for us because they might be a natural... Pest control, let's call them. <laughs> Get another hunting camp here. And I think I'm going to local reform. I don't want another town yet. 
I need to expand a little bit more before we do that. And we've completed community. Up next. Full cotton, flax, flax or olives. Culture and knowledge for the cathedral. I feel like maybe mining. Yeah, we got a couple of spots that mining could already get us in on. If we discover that there's anything there that we can actually use. Need to put workers in the clay pit for now it's useless. Well, we don't have like a kiln right now, so. Ah, cool. They actually wiped that city off the map. I just can't believe how fast, uh, like how close in these guys started to us. The city of Thebes. So they actually have a second town, it looks like. Yeah, that's a, that's a full town. A full city, a full capital. You know, I really, what I need to be doing is getting exploration XP. Perhaps I can make friends with Greece. As we run back with all of our other units to hide. We're on a huge map, actually. Our first pioneer. Skilled builder and architect who can stake claim to a land by constructing an outpost. So the natural place for that is going to be in the middle of this desert. You can claim goods via outposts. So I think what I'll do is I'll probably put it here and he'll get access to those olives. And then he can kind of guard the Sahara. Abracadabra. Picked up mining. No Age of Heroes. I suppose. I might want shipbuilding, honestly, kind of early on. Uh, I'm going to Eureka. We have expanded again here, including out to cows, which I need a pasture for. And I don't think we've actually created, I don't, I don't think there's anything in these hills. <laughs> I think I might have been wrong on that. Uh, so hold on, this gives us rice, which is wealth. This gets us leather and meat, so obviously that would be the best option. So we'll go for another pasture uh, in 16, so we can do that next turn. Harbor for the exploration. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of my next, the building that I was going to go for here. Oh, right. Actually, sorry, that's an improvement building. My bad. Some government XP might not be terrible. We're saying the harbor, the dock exploration. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got to do that. Look at him, sneaking scouts through the jungle. We've picked up a leaf. Ah! We could start entering the Age of Iron. Is there anything we really need here? Markets, bribes, envoys.
Speed of expansion into water tiles. There's not really anything good in these water tiles. So we'll have to see. Is the game worth the $40 price tag or better off just playing Civ? I mean, it's got similarities, obviously, um, to Civilization, but I think so far from what I've seen, I, I would say it's worth a $40 price tag. It is a good game. It definitely needs some, like, buffing around the edges, but ships produce a lot of food with fishing boats. Yes, if you can get the fish for them, for sure. May have a bunch of iron and coal. Won't see until the Iron Age. True, true. I was excited to join the autopsy club the other day. Wednesdays are open mic night. <laughs> Karakaz, good morning. Crucial cultural innovation bribes. Listen, somebody's got to get paid somehow. Uh, so... I think we're going to outpost here. Link to Montpellier. It built to his town instead of mine. I don't want a road to his town. All right, we're going to go back one. And we're going to try building it there instead. Uh, yikes. He's blocked me in here now. I think we'll start cutting through the forest with that scout and hoping for the best. The Age of Iron does produce new government types. So getting ready for reformed tribalism would be smart. And we need like 30 points here for anything. Been complaining for a while about the lack of innovation in the Forex space, and I feel like Millennia has definitely innovated what I wanted to, even with the rough edges. I, I mean, like, it has this whole concept of, like, everything gets a lot more specialized than it does in Civ. You know, I love Civ. I've played a lot of Civ over the years, uh, 4, 5, and 6 in particular. And I really, really like them, but it's also, like... You end up in this situation where kind of all of your cities feel like they're the same a lot of the time in Civ 6. And from our one playthrough so far in this, it does feel like your cities are a lot different. All of them get hyper-specialized in this game. For good or for worse. <gasps> Look at all that fish. If only that was up here. Uh, okay, clearly we got attacked here. That's okay. This is just going to be all forest, I think. Well, we are somehow ahead in tech right now, which is nice. Maybe we'll explore out this way instead of just down the coast. I'm going to park these guys in town because they'll start adding uh, unrest suppression. And then really, like, we need population and we need housing. I also need a pasture. Also, wouldn't hurt to get a kiln. Converts clay into bricks. I actually think that might be what we need to prioritize right now. We're getting a lot of bonus culture from all this meat. Which is great. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Undiscovered. Can you discover? Discover landmark? Help, help. I'm being oppressed. 
the Borneo Rainforest. I'm getting beat up a little bit here. All right, I'm really hoping we can keep growing here before we do anything else. Um, Germany, Sweden, Eureka. I'd like to keep that. Something interesting about Millennia is the different age. Two national spirits make your cities play radically different. Yes, naturalist versus mound builders. Yes. One dwelling gets you to 200% housing. Yeah, I guess I guess the big problem is that we're going to run into the point where we can't really work all the tiles. If I build a kiln, it's not going to matter because we won't have the pop to actually build it. You make a sound argument. Reduce cost of expansion into scrubs. Unlock bow hunters. Reveals elephant. Scrubland lets me push up this way. Which will be more important for like my next city, I think. But it's still pretty good here. I wonder if I grow like one more in this direction, can I absorb that as my next town? I do want to just put a town over here. 70 to influence the jungle. Woo, woo, wow. Part of me is also like, well, if I get elephants. Hot tamales. All right, we're going to build a town right here. And then we're going to build a fishing village right there. That's a lot of elephants. They give ivory. I also assume they must give you meat, which also then means culture for me, because we got that nice innovation early on. Eureka's a trap. Never Eureka. Local reforms gives the same total research, but also boosts everything else you do by 50%. Really? That seems shocking. Even if it's like the first Eureka, you do a match. They say build it and they will come, but what if you need to build it in the first place? <laughs> Extremely important. Eureka's terrible needs a buff. And if you want knowledge, you want local reforms. Number one trick to be good at millennia is that. All right. We'll take that into consideration then. An elephant hive. Nice. That's another... Um, Unique location. Landmark. Novobirsk. The good news is that we get a lot of culture right now. Because of all the meat. Hoggle Harvest State. I mean, I guess I could just be getting them fish. Are you kidding me, dude? Sweden is beating me again here. How? Vassals, I suppose. And he's absorbed a second town. Man, the computer gets some buffs on high difficulty. That's actually way better. We've entered an age of heroes. Special hero leaders are available. Promote scouts into heroes and go on quests. Quests have been revealed on the map. Send heroes to quests and earn their rewards. And the Earth's domain is available. I feel like this is good for us. Eureka gives you five knowledge per age, so we get 10. Local reforms gives you 50% for five turns. Your four science becomes six science. Oh, I guess it's if you need the Eureka, if you need it all like right away it's probably better to do Eureka. Like if you're just trying to rush someone in being like, I guaranteed I need to get to this point and I only got one turn to do it. But yeah, otherwise local reform better for every region. Every reason. 
A hero unit spawns in your homelands and heroes on quests. Gain veterancy levels on your heroes to get more difficult quests. Complete four quests to unlock the Parthenon. New governments unlocked. Coal, gold, iron, crossbows, granary, middens, all sorts of stuff. We can peaceful do do a peaceful revolution soon as well. And we got a hero, do we? Yeah. There's a legend. There's a prophecy. There's a legend. All right, heroes, off to work. So a couple of unique things in here. Storytelling. Quests have additional reward choices. Poets. Convert knowledge. Converts paper to poems. Hall of Heroes. Exploration XP. That's not a bad choice. And a paper maker. Converts logs into paper. Glory. The bathhouse. The mausoleum. Ovens. Flour to bread. Lodges. Better housing. And gives you exploration XP. And increases the number of towns a region can support. The Oracle is also unique to the Age of Heroes. Arts XP and culture. Converts gold to arts XP and culture. Spawns a hero at the target capital. I think I might go glory. Start with a little early glory. Take the storytelling first because it gives you bonus better quest options. Any scout with 10 combat XP can upgrade to a hero. Age of Hero sounds gay in a good way. It's the best way. I don't even think we have 10 combat XP. We've been very poor on the combat this campaign. But we were so high on the combat last time, so... All right, our town center is complete. Improvement points, diplomacy, production. I think we might need some production. Get building things a little bit faster. Glory is the infrastructure. If you want a second town, you need glory. I do need a second town. Desperately. You know, we have a legend, a legend, and the prophecy. And then I just need to find one other thing. That's It's four quests, he said. So I can probably send him out into the jungles. Hopefully afterwards. And maybe we can find some good stuff. This is just his entire turn. So we'll just set him up. We'll move down the coast there. I'm going to keep fleeing in this direction with you. All right. And then we'll move into the Age of Heroes. All right. Where were we? Ending a turn. We're going to do our first legendary quest. The local legend. Legend tells of a hero who would save people in their time of need. Ask the local villagers in their chores. Assist the local villagers in the chores. Spawn scouts, spawn prospectors. We got a chance to upgrade some of these guys a bit. Housing generates food. I feel like saving up for two bonus food for meat is the obvious choice for me right now. Seeing as how much meat I have. Uh, which, speaking of, we also need to grab a pasture for these cows. I regret nothing. Yeah, once we get that, that'll give us the extra little bit of food. We need to get this both up to double 100s. Poke our head in here. Find a barbarian camp. Nice. And I can actually re-sync back in here and not have this scout get killed. Love to see it. We're going to save up for the 30 here on Spawn Settler, which we'll put basically where this guy is right now. And then we'll get a million elephant ivory. Innovation Colossus. An engineer is designed to status for a massive bronze statue. It will become a symbol other nations will respect. Unlocks the Colossus. Is it a building? It is. 84 turns. 
One culture, one warfare XP, 10 production. I mean, it's pretty good. We don't have to rush it right away. All right, Axiom, I'm going to need you to chill a little on the back seat, dude. I appreciate I appreciate the advice, especially on things like the Eureka, but a little chill on the back seat. Dottie, hello. How are you? Hyped to try this in an hour or two? I can believe it. I have been very, very excited for this release. Age quests, epic quests. I mean, I guess everything else is still tech related. So there is a legend up here, a dragon's gate. Oh, that sounds really cool. I feel like the answer is going to be pushing in through here to try and find something. Oh, like this. Here we go. Yeah. All right. So we can pick up this legend. Then we can come back down here, do this prophecy, and then we can sneak around through this forest and do whatever Jihua 2 is. I think that's going to be the play. We're a peaceful nation, Sweden. We're not trying your patience. Legend tells of a hero who would save people in their time of need. Please, Sweden. We don't want to upset you. In fact, you're pretty much the only chance I have of making friends. Unless Greece just rocks your body. Which is kind of what I'm hoping for right now. Peaceful revolution. Ba, 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 ba. Imperial dynasty or kingdom. Imperial dynasty makes way more sense for us. Kingdom is all about vassal management. Imperial dynasty is all about having a one big city. Uh, and considering we have zero vassals and only one city, this probably seems like the way we're going to be going here. We unlock construct palace domain power. Increases domain XP maximum to 200. Plus one food, plus one region, plus one housing for housing one production on palace for every two pop in the region trash gives better sanitation better knowledge for population it's gonna have to be we ain't got much a choice so does the palace give me much three government xp and four influence Three government XP means this will earn it back in like seven turns. That kind of seems like a no-brainer. I want that settler. But considering I make such little government XP right now. Age of Heroes, haven't seen it up close before. Yeah, this is our first Age of Heroes. We had the Age of Blood last time we played. Trash gives better sanitation, right? Why don't people use hats like that Imperial dude anymore? Want fancy hats with braids? I mean, honestly, the hat game in modern time is wildly disappointing. All right, we're gonna get this two food from Meat Goods. And then Bone Tools will also probably be our next step, seeing as we have a lot of bone. Oh, I didn't even notice that we also have elephants here. Uh, let's drop another hunting camp. Giving us even more meat. And these cattle are giving us exploration XP as well, which is kind of nice. Who was that? Germany? Where'd you come from? Fishing villages that I cannot get. I could have this scout just regroup and return to the closest settlement. For 5 XP. I'm going to do that. It's such a jump. I can have them actually like explore this forest ahead of this guy now too. You have met another nation. Ba, 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 ba.
You have met a lot of barbarians. <laughs> That's a whole lot of barbarians. Your boat is getting wrecked. All right, let's put you here. And then we can do that quest. Historically, Germany and France have been best friends. It's great to have them as neighbors. I mean, it's certainly better than having the Swedes with, with us right now. Bit of knowledge, bit of exploration. Uh, I guess let's just like bring this guy back and start fishing with him, probably. Seems like maybe the best option. And then we should be able to get that in two turns. You're going to flee back. You're going to come down here and scout into... The... Actually, I guess just like through here and then you can go left. Nice. We've just grown onto grapes. And more wheat. Excellent, excellent, excellent growth. We're at 200, 200. So I'm feeling pretty comfy. This zoomed up way faster than I anticipated. So let's get that settler. Ooh, I think it's just going to go there. You know, I largely want this city to move into the forest. Excuse me. I want it there. It, it just makes the most sense can be completely surrounded by trees. It can just be a, a full lumber city. It'll be really, really powerful. Uh, so I guess let's just do local reforms. News from abroad. Sweden and Greece are now at war. Fantastic news for us. Greece, my dudes. Open an embassy to enable creating new treaties. We got to make some friends with this guy. Because right now, he's our best bet against Sweden. This age procs epic quests. Yeah, it's exactly it. Uh, we've made the work camp here, so we actually make things way faster. The Colossus went from 80 turns to 22. A meeting hall will give you diplomacy. It only takes three turns. I think I'm just going to take that. Not like it's been a hundred years of war between France and Germany until World War II. Nah. Very friendly ever since the Francine Empire fell apart. You've completed four quests. Gained 20 XP from completing these quests. These regions can now build the Parthenon. Atop the mountain lies a beautiful garden tended by beautiful women. Their queen presents the hero with a peach as a gift. Oh man, if we had storytelling... We could have gotten plus one tactics to leader units, which is just like 10% extra in combat, which arguably is not actually something that we'd really want because I don't really want to be doing combat. I do want to be doing more exploration. Art's also very good for us, probably. But I'm going to take the XP right now since it directly boosts wild hunters. We can get a crazy amount of improvement points. And we can let them keep growing. And this guy can also just keep looking for more quests. Such as this council. Those settlers are ready to rock. Into Elephant Town. Empire and families crumble the same with legacy between several heirs on the table. If you really want that scrubbling tile for the city, do you have officials? You can buy that for us for 30 exploration. I don't have the officials yet, but you are right. 
the purchase of that tile would be a fast way to do it. Once we grow, like, yeah, we could just grow this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good idea. Is it officials from the previous section? Claim territory. Okay, so we'll go back and we'll get that. That's really good advice. Potentially save us a lot of time there. Swedes are down here as well. All right, the city of Lyon. Where we will be hunting elephants. What do you mean improvement cannot be placed here? Oh, because you're a vassal. Of course. But of course. I actually forgot all about that. That's okay. We're still growing. We're eight. How big are these guys? Eleven? He has three clay pits. Thirteen. Is this just computer hacks? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, I guess the kiln. AI are savages. Capital is almost one bonus resource per pop. Yeah. Tall Empire is supposed to have larger towns. It's supposed to. <laughs> AI gets bust above Adip. Yeah, we're playing on Master. So we are like pushing it to the limit a little bit. Riding into the danger zone. Uh, I want to get some farms going for these as well. Not mills, farms. Honestly, I might as well grab both of these for now. Arts XP, combat XP. The scheming Durhodana holds council, plotting to betray Yudhishthira and claim the wealth of his kingdom. Sure. Have some loaded dice. Why not? Uh, I'm going to pick up faster scrubland expansion now that we have these other cities and stuff. And then Montpellier has done its meeting hall. Yeah, let's make the Parthenon. Why not? Rice takes plantations, not firms. Uh, it's wheat. It's wheat. It's not rice. Yeah. I guess this guy is just going to keep looking for legends. LOL. Scorpithian, thank you for the follow, dude. Welcome to the agency. All random, all masters. The old ARAM. Greece and Sweden have ended their war. That's earlier than I had hoped for. I do feel like we're very stuck ourselves into a corner here in a bad way. Farm provides food. The palace increases region level. Uh, we're at 200 food, so I tell you what, let's go region level. Question mark. Exploitation of the elephant, you create the special bow archer unit and exploit the turn from 10 turns ago.
These guys can also... Oh, can also gather resources once spawns in your homeland. I see. I see, I see, I see. Cutting edge. Increase innovation accumulated each turn. Propaganda. Reduces chaos. Part of me is like we have to just do local reforms again. I want a town here to make a fishing town. I'm also one turn off officials. I might actually just skip the culture power for one turn. Or, I mean, we could just duck another local reform in here. We make so much off of it. Yeah, why not? Envoy! Integrate vessel. Open negotiations. I feel like I'd rather have negotiations with Greece than Sweden. But they didn't seem to do very well in that war. So maybe we play that out a little bit. See how we do. Rice and wheat, very similar. Very similar. Easy to confuse them. Absolutely. Uh, okay, I got one more grape here, which needs a plantation. And then we can kind of decide what we want to... Do I have the thing to make wheat into flour? A mill. Two wheat or rice into flour. One wheat, two wheat. So if I build that there, and then I build a oven, I can turn that flour into bread. There's our officials. I like the idea of storytelling. Um, because it lets us, when we get this log city, we're going to be able to just turn that all into Earth XP. Converts gold into offerings. Spawns a hero for quests. Reduces the cost of gifts. Artists. Converts logs into wealth. Uh, interesting thing here is limestone into talisman. So if we had actually gone like the... Um, if instead of going hunters, we went with the uh, uh, engineering god kings or whatever they were called, they produce limestone all the time. So that's a good way to... Mix them in with spirituality. Construction gives us what? Stone towers, stone walls. Smelting gives us all the stuff. But we, uh, let's go storytelling. That feels like a safe bet for me. Gain improvement points. I'd rather save up for expand town here. Farms gain plus one food. Housing gets plus one housing. Plus one production on pals for every two pop. We'll probably go with that. As we figure out exactly what our plan is here. And yeah, for 30 XP, we can claim territory. So we could pull that on the jungle and then we could build the town right there. Yeah, and I think I'm just going to have to make friends with these fellas. Damn dudes, are there no quests left on the map? What happened? Rude? Didn't know they could do that. <laughs> My envoy got absolutely just like dunked by Sweden. 
that's the case, I'm going to attack this scout. Teach them a thing or two. Edo, I'm seeing roads here, so I'm assuming Germany must be just down here. Damn, dudes. Damn, damn, damn. I want to make an oven, but I'm also going to need sanitation in one turn. So let's hold a brief moment. As I think level 10 gives you sanit in, like requires sanitation right away. Oh, no, it doesn't. All right, then let's make an oven. Got a little breathing room. This is not Germany. There's a spot, though. Dude's got spear units, and I've just got clubs. Ito was Japanese. Yes. Yeah. What we do is Dengas Khan did to Persia when they killed his emissary. Kill everyone and tear down their cities, their monuments, and histories. Let Sweden run red with blood. It would be a pretty hard pivot. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm against it, but it would just be a hard pivot. Growing into the mountains a little bit here. I mean, we might as well. not really a good deal for us <laughs> let's claim this let's claim actually hold on yeah let's claim the jungle and then let's use my culture power to create a town right here excellent we have a weird road but this will allow me to make this into a forestry town, which will work very, 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 very well for us. So much so that I'm going to start by building a forester. All right, my farms and everything are not even being run right now. And I'm actually running out of housing. Noted. Well and truly noted. Battles and Spellforce Conquest of EO look better. Oh, the battles and Spellforce look amazing, though. Ain't no doubt about that. Uh, okay, we did heal up quite a bit here. I'm not really winning that. I'm not really losing it either, though. We could upgrade to the mausoleum, allow us to get a little bit bigger borders. Culture Warfare XP in production for the Colossus. Bathhouse will give us sanitation, so I could actually just wait on that. I'm not having unrest problems because of the capital buildings. I'm not having food problems. Yeah, I'm I'm mostly having problems that I don't have anywhere to expand into, so. Should I actually spend my money here? And just turbo boost that? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some walls. <laughs> Battle's number one unanimous complaint about the game. Battle screen is based on the old call to power. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just, it looks very different from everything else is the funny part, I find. Everything else looks so much cleaner in comparison.
so much more new age mechanics look super well done graphics are quite so so yeah i understand the trade system is great but i haven't really gotten into it yep i've also heard that that was kind of one of the things i wanted to focus on a little bit with this as we like grow big um gotta figure out exactly how that tracks first all right these guys picked up the great barrier reef up here I don't know what the spearman is doing, but I'm just going to keep wailing on him for now. Increase the town's level by one. This would solve some of my housing. Uh, it also allows specializations to happen. So here's the thing. If he goes farming, I don't think farming affects hunting camps. And I don't think you can specialize into a hunting. But like, how far am I away from all of these? Oh, really not far at all. So we're going to upgrade Valence and we're going to turn it into a lumber town. So a farming town. Farming towns generate food for adjacent farming improvement. Farm, plantation, pasture, ranch. But not hunting camp, right? No. Lumber towns. Foresters and logging camps. Which is going to be everything that surrounds this guy. And then we'll probably put like a sawmill right there. Do I have a sawmill? Saw pit? Bow, bow. Have to do some chores. Be heading out, Newton. Take it easy, dude. There's a neat trick similar to building outposts two tiles from the border and absorbing it, but that takes engineering XP. Yep. Absorbing outposts makes it instantly a level two town. Oh, that is very interesting. Did not know that. Lumber town boost is going to be huge. Yep. Yep. We can get five foresters and get 10 production. It's going to be amazing. I think it's really going to like turn that city turn that city up a lot. Help the Pandavas defeat each of the enemy generals. We need storytelling. I'm one turn off from this. Oh no, can I just refuse this? No. One turn off. I don't know why I didn't wait. A greedy boy I am. Greedy, greedy boy. All right. Well, we'll do a little bit of extra scouting here, but I think I'm going to send this guy west. I mean, is five influence really going to be that big a deal? Yeah, that's pretty good. Don't encourage the saves coming. I said, you live, you learn. Sweden and Greece are now at war. Montpellier has completed its walls. I'm going to build the bathhouse. It doesn't need sanitation yet, but it will soon. And I don't really have anywhere to put it, so... Oh, I think I can build another lumber camp here. Ooh, Barbos. And Istanbul. More Barbos over there. Completed storytelling. Man, somebody is already on the Age of Kings. I find that very hard to believe.
converts logs to charms. Gold to arts XP. I mean, I just don't have any um, ores. So I th Good, great question here. Limestone or marble to talisman, that's useless. Spawns an artist on the capital. Use artists to rush culture and generate artwork goods. I think I'm going to go spirituality. Copper is the default ore. Well, I'm not even seeing. Oh, I see like iron, coal. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if there's not a special thing in there, like iron or coal, I, I don't really want to take it. All right. Yeah, all right. How far behind am I in these guys? 11. Okay, so he seems to have capped out and we've caught up. That little homie's going to keep scouting. How's Greece? Up to 15. Wow. Two domains. Yeah, he got all this really nice farming. Three dwellings, actually. He's got three dwellings up here. Computer definitely gets some crazy boosts. I really got to look into... I should have done this a very long time ago. What does it take to absorb Leon? One more turn. All right, well, here we go. I guess all it really takes is some patience. Grab another Forester. Probably won't do anything with that Forester in the meantime. All right, I'm missing two logs. There's a guy working this saw pit, which doesn't make a ton of sense. He gets the engineering XP, but that's about it. I don't have anybody on the dock, which I feel like I probably should have at all times for that Expo XP. Same here. Right? Like, I barely even got this leveled up. It's bad. Takes 40, 25 government XP next turn, yeah. Alrighty. Please give me quests. Leipzig. No outposts I can make there. If their farms are wheat, shouldn't they make two wheat per farm? I think it's only one. Yeah, work for one wheat. It might have been nerfed from the demo. They've been changing a lot, like, um, in, in just in terms of, of, of consistently putting out some patches. Greece and Sweden have ended their war again in what looks like a stalemate. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, as long as Greece keeps going after Sweden, uh, Sweden is less of a concern for me. Can I restore neutrality? I'd like that very much, please. What is this little guy? 
Rejected. Although we are determined to continue our efforts to mitigate the differences between our two nations, we have not yet reached that stage. Greece has deployed a merchant in Lyon. And he's built a, a village here, Ostersund. That is a greedy play. Part of me is wondering about like putting a town right here just to push against them. I could make it a lumber town. Uh, that's not terrible. And then make my other one a fishing town over here. I think we're going to do that. Drop the town there. You get that scrub line in like five turns. Yeah, I'm mostly just concerned about cutting off any growth that he has. Because he's clearly making some really aggressive plays against me here. That I'm not particularly fond of. All right, Montpellier has completed the bathhouse. The Hall of Heroes. Knowledge and Exploration XP. I mean, that seems like a good choice for us. Montpellier is low on housing, but it's doing really good on sanitation. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I have anywhere to put a dwelling, do I? Or a lodge? Yes, I do. Actually, right here. Amazing. And that generates exploration XP. Puts us up to 195. Okay, so our town should keep growing. Leon, you need... Probably lots of stuff. I'm going to go with a work camp right away so they can get production nice and early. We're also then going to start putting in hunting pits. As we hunt these elephants to death. Uh, and then honestly, like a lodge is probably the first thing I should build after that. I'd love it if we could get something to spend meat on. Some sort of meat based upgrade. Uh, I actually think I'm going to go this way. Push out to the shore a little bit so we can explore better. Starting at third age, you have either lodges or public quarters. Scrap dwellings to get those instead. Given how strong lodges are, we probably don't need to scrap dwellings for a while. Yeah. I think it'll be a slow upgrade across there. Ah, this is totally blocked. Womp, womp, womp. These guys also get fish, right? Yeah. I would like that XP. But I guess all things with due time. I guess I maybe need to unlock everything here. Here we go. There's the growth of those elephants and this other hunting camp. Which I know we don't have the population for them. But I want to make sure are ready to rock. First, paper to poems. First, logs to paper. So what I probably want to do is end up getting rid of this sawmill. And building a paper maker. Foresters and logging camps. Oh, okay. So whatever is close to it, that actually doesn't matter. Yeah, we got some options. 
a tropical rainforest. There is a crazy amount of jungle on this map. We've picked up spirituality. I should probably start moving into the Age of Kings, considering Greece is like racing towards it at hyperspeed right now. And what are we short on the most? We're actually short on food the most. So I'm going to pick up this farm bonus. As our capital grows, not that fast. <laughs> As our capital grows at an okay rate. Build improvement points. You build exploration XP. Which I probably should have done a long time ago. Not realizing quite what gives all the different types. Housing grants food. I do have to unlock every one of these to get hunting grounds. So I guess we're going to just keep going up that tree. We're entered into a new age. Bam. Greece. Whooping everybody. Age of Kings. Okay, Germany is hostile. Okay, okay. We're going to expand that town. I guess we'll save up for envoys. And I'm going to guess that there's no more quests for me to get. It's a bit unfortunate, but... I mean, I guess I'm technically low on food here. We might as well go for the granary. Lodges, you say? Ooh, I'm being attacked a lot there. You're in trouble, I think. He might be in some big trouble, dub dubs. Uh, it does appear that we have grown into the forests. So Valence is going to put out an insane amount of wood now. This is going to give us a ton of extra production. Like a huge, we should start seeing like big spikes in our city, our ability for our city to grow now. I have a thought, which is actually, can I absorb this outpost? I can. Would it be Leon who gets it, though? Probably. Uh, we're due for an innovation. These guys are in my way. I can't build a town here and I really want to. Grab bow hunters. Use a merchant to increase a vassal's prosperity or generate wealth from other nations. I have a big problem because everyone on my border hates me and I can't do any trading. You can set who gets an outpost by clicking it. Oh, based on who it's like linked to. I mean, here's the thing is there's not really like any resources up here. But there's not really any resources in any other direction either.
it would at least give me a lot of free land to grow. So that's not what I wanted it to do. <laughs> so I guess it doesn't uh, go to wherever it's linked to. It just goes to wherever it's nearby. Main city doesn't have a town slot. That is possible. Quite possible. Oh, that took me back like a whole turn. That took me back many turns for some reason. The lookout and the granary. Yeah. Really hope they port this to Mac. I suspect they probably would. I feel like there's a lot of Civ players on Mac. I think it depends on like how well it does and how well it sells. Germany declares hostilities. Are we playing France? We are playing France. We are the French. Did we upgrade this town? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, those guys have left. Can I rush this? That's what I want to do. That we weren't able to do last time. Oh, so many barbarians. I might have to retire him. Almost certain this is a Unity game just because of the performance complaints from reviewers, so it should be easy to get to Mac. Yeah. They said it relies on sales. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not unusual. All right. These guys have their Kunda camps, their Abbey. That needs fish. I could build docks. Not a terrible idea. No room for anything here. Oh, all my lumber camps are not built, are they? We went back that far. I see. This guy is on such a wild adventure right now. All right. Well, I feel like I'd be a fool at this point not to get things like the temple at one turn. I think everything in here is going to start costing us one turn because we just started making so much production because of this city, this little lumber city, which seems extremely powerful upgrade. We've unlocked a bow hunter. Which we can use to hunt those elephants. And we might as well. And my dude, I think you need to regroup at this point. This seems to be a dead end for you. That's a village. Minus three unrest. A market would get me diplomacy XP, which I'm starting to feel like we're going to need. And Leon is straight up having a bad day.
So we're just going to do that. We're just going to do that. Uh, so we got the work camp on early. My tooltips are bugging out. Your government, your knowledge. Uh, let's grab a little government XP early on for these guys. Or... Yeah. Everything is just an elephant. All my tooltips are just elephant now. <laughs> Which is kind of amazing, but also foolish. Uh, this guy appears to be having a really gross time against these archers. Oh, goodness gracious. He's retired. He earned his retirement. We'll let him be. I don't like it, but we'll do it. Housing gains housing. Other things gain sanitation. Uh, I don't have trash, so I might as well just... Is there anything else I need government on? Settlers. I could push a bunch of settlers down here and get this flax. And then build a town here that would dig up coal. I'm going to have to do that. I'm struggling to see my options locked into the corner right now. Carriage procession. The populace floods the streets of France to catch a glimpse of the royal family as they're carried towards the palace. Palace plus one culture. I mean, that's not a great innovation if I'm going to be real with you, but I'll take it. It's not terrible. Montpellier. Probably about time we build the Colossus. Now that everything else is online. We'll get an envoy soon. Just discovered a weed tile. That icon is not the same as where Montpellier has farms. So it looks like it is rice. I'll take a look. Hold on. We once again need to build foresters. Castle, outposts, religion, and a national spirit. Rice with plantation. Uh, you might be right. I think you are dead right. These should be plantations. Rice with plantation. Okay, we can still make rice flour, which will make rice bread. Make one wheat on non-wheat tiles. You have to destroy the farm first. Yeah. Interesting. Five grains buff plus one food. 
A foolish little mistake. Mount Fuji. All right, well, it doesn't look like I'm getting around much further this way. We've entered the Age of Kings. Workshops and logging camps, probably not a bad idea for us. Medieval universities giving us knowledge and knowledge. Guilds upgrade the market, the great hall. The jeweler converts gold to jewelry. Housing. The winery, grapes or rice to fine wine. Dry compass, professional army, organized religion, and feudalism is the other one. Ah, this is all the increased plantations and farms and ranches. Kitchen converts two meat to food and luxury. Okay, well, that would be busted for us. Let's get that first. Our national spirit, engineering, and shogunate are the only ones that have been stolen. Iron prospectors, bonuses from coal, wealth, trebuchets, tinkerers. Explorers. Launch an expedition on previously discovered landmarks for valuable rewards. I don't really find that's true, <laughs> personally. I wouldn't really say they're valuable rewards. Cons and Crusaders. Spice Merchants. Outposts see further and generate wealth. Outposts gain militia. Merchants and settlers can convert into one another. That's pretty cool. I, I think arts is what we're going to go for here. We have chivalry, which is... Peasants, vassal production, taverns and knights, tapestry weavers, or theologians. I feel like theologians is going to be what we're going to need. Daniel Ronan, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the agency. Hello. We're doing very well. Having a very fun time. Trying to build tall because mostly we're boxed into a corner. Religion and arts XP. Bonus faith from religious texts. Wealth faith. Francis, any religion, arts XP. I think I'm going to go theologian. Because we're so small, I feel like we could probably do religious shenanigans. And I like the idea about going arts. It feels like a strong choice based on our previous previous things. Uh, that being said, large temple, holy site. Oh, age of discovery, build five docks. Religious texts. Holy sites and temples. Uh, I'm going to stick with feudalism to start. Spawn artist to rush culture and generate artwork. Immigration. Increase the region's population by one. Promote cultural exports. Target a friendly vassalized territory to increase its prosperity. Follows a religion to adopt it as your national state religion. Where do I get religion? Found religion. Hello. It's religion time. This looks like some sort of weird Eldritch God. We're France. So we could be any number of things. We could just be the Illuminati. <laughs> I kind of like that weird Eldritch scribble. There's something about this that just speaks to me. The power button symbol. Can't immigrate to our capital, but we could add a pop to Leon. We, we could be the cult of power buttons. <laughs> 
Custom religion, uh, power upism. <laughs> Uh, the religious building would be the PSU. <laughs> Take the power button, call it terminally online. Oh, that's way better. The building name could probably just be like the internet then. Modem? The power bottoms will be the power buttons. Terminally online it is. Spread your state religion into a foreign region. Boost your state religion in a friendly region and reduces unrest. Can I target unrevealed territory? Obviously, what I'm thinking is if I spread my religion into Sweden, it doesn't matter if they're bigger than me. I can earth them. We're going to boost it, Leon. For now. I am going to get an envoy. And I'm going to try to sneak him up to Greece. I don't know how well it's going to work. Fingers crossed we can pull it off. Uh, it looks like this guy has stolen all of my jungle territory. Yep. Yeah. So I got screwed really bad here. Real, real bad. Oh, our starting position has been rough. A hard time have we had. All right, Leon. Did I accidentally take out your city guard? I did. We'll add him back in. We'll build some modems in the meantime. Human guy in Leon does not show the power button. Uh, the human, the human guy is basically there's there's not enough for it to be like the full religion. Okay, Germany wants to go to war with me. Today might be a very short campaign. <laughs> At the way things are going so far, I'm not certain we're going to actually be able to make it out of this one. But it's very hard to tell. There we go, minus two. Sweden and Greece back at each other's throats again. Now, you need fishing boats. Can't believe he got all that territory. So upsetting. I need a paper maker here. Well, there's no room because for some reason you're not allowed to build in the hills. I'm not sure that will do anything for me. All right. Well, at least we're growing. Starting position was fine. The problem was the appearance of ugly Swedes. Do we need a pile of poop in the capital? No, we have a, a bathhouse. So we've uh, managed to avoid sanitation needs because of that. Which I'm pretty grateful for. You're going to be a coastal town. You're going to upgrade those guys. Housing gives housing.
I'm gonna unlock. Gotta find a way to get some arts XP. This town needs to grow. I'm actually really shocked it hasn't grown into all this scrubland yet. Novo Beersk. Wow, these guys are really Sweden is really pushing hard. So funny, my first campaign, like the computer was really bad at pushing in any direction. And that has not been the case this time. Dude, why am I making plus six chaos? Excuse me, where is that coming from? Okay. I could just put the town right there and then that could be my coal town. Coffee with plantation. I could do a farming town there, maybe. I think I am going to do that. Uh, Montpellier. We'll grab you a watch since you're seeming to struggle. We just got the Colossus. Which is fun. Scrap a dwelling or two for the paper maker. Oh, that's okay. not a bad idea. I could also probably get rid of the clay pits. Realistically. And the brick maker. And then just move those population over there. Okay, we're making flour and we're not making bread. You're making clay, but you're not using it. I'm getting rid of you. There we go. That'll hopefully spread that a little bit further. I'm so, I'm so boxed in. Is that Sweden just attacked me with that huge army? Crossbows, spears, and crossbows? Yeah, they sure did. Those jerks. I am rapidly running out of stuff to build in my capital. Just maybe a good thing, but feels dangerous. Oh, my fishing boats. Attacked by barbarians. Can you flee? You cannot flee. Cancel harvest, allowing him to move freely. I mean, I think you're probably toast. But we'll see how we do. I feel like we're in general probably pretty toast, but we're going to see how we do. How is this to Civ 6 render? Thank you for the follow. Uh, it is different than Civ 6. It is, it's more... Uh, the, I guess the comment I've been making is it's it becomes much more specialized. Where in a game of Civ 6, it's very similar in a lot of ways, obviously. You know, there's clear homages to it. Um, but where a game like Civ 6, you end up with like cities that kind of all do everything. And this, you end up with very specialized cities. You end up with very specialized armies. Um, even your culture seems to get a bit more specialized as you, as you pick like unique aspects every couple of ages that, that focus you towards certain things. 
Like, we're wild hunters and an imperial dynasty, so we're all about hunting elephants and growing one super city. But other than that, we're not really good at anything. <laughs> For example. Uh, these guys need to grow before we can get another town in here. What do I need? A lot of turns. Boop, 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 boop. I guess local reforms. Or innovation. But I don't really feel like engineering is my, like, go-to here. I, I feel like I'm pushing in towards arts. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to reduce chaos. Because I really... If I get hit with, like, a ton of barbarians, I, I literally don't have an army. Greece and Sweden ending their war. I, I, I guess I'm going to upgrade that to the keep. In Lyon. The mausoleum would be probably my best bet here. You're 200. You're running short on sanitation. Five housing, 15 housing. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So we're going to build a midden just outside of town here. Wow, only 140%. Oh, unless I have somebody work it. That's better, but now I don't have paper. I think I'm going to take somebody off of the saw pit. You make one log into paper and you take two paper into religious text. Oh! Or you can take up to two paper. Oh, okay. So I, what I need is another paper maker here. Good gravy, man. Can I build in that forest? No. I didn't think so, but I had to check. Reminds me more of humankind. This if I actually never played humankind. I feel like I'm missing it on that. Four more bowmen for the last perk. In Wild Hunters? Yeah, you're right. Uh, that does mean I could actually just spend some of this XP on claiming stuff. Such as that. So my Forester could not suck. And I could look for gold in the hills. Good look for gold in them da hills. Not that I have the pop to manage it. I am not a threat to you, Sweden. I don't know what Kool-Aid you're drinking, dude. But I have been nothing but non-threatening this entire game. Try to make that town a little more prosperous. I heard you threatening us. I swear I'm not. I ain't doing anything but being a good boy. Open negotiations. Hooray. We finally got an envoy to Greece. 
Improve relations with diplomacy XP. Demand coin, demand open an embassy. Send him a gift. I need diplomacy XP for all of this. And I got to tell you what I do not create is diplomacy XP. Well, at least I'm dragging Sweden's army as far away as physically possible. <gasps> is that a Swedish envoy? How do you like it now? How do you like it, Sweden? If somebody kills your envoys in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, not so fun, is it? You punk. Uh, Sweden is starting to become terminally online as well. I'm glad to say. It's going to take them some time, but... <gasps> Barbarians. Barbarians at the gates. Thank you, bow hunters. You've done a good job here today. Getting within 50 kilometers of a Swede counts as being threatening. Didn't miss out on humankind. I anticipate the game from announcement to alpha release. Loved Endless Legend. Best humankind player on the planet. Still think the game is utter mediocre and a huge disappointment. I heard it just has a lot of bugs. Or it had a lot of bugs at launch, but has gotten better. Sweden's still bitter about losing the Baltic Empire. Makes him testy. Humankind sort of reverse millennia. Looks great for Furton style, but the mechanics are mid. Millennia has great mechanics, but mid graphics. That seems like a fair assessment. How many of these do I need? Five. Well, at least Sweden's spending all of its time trying to rush after me. Hey, what's going on here? I shouldn't have intolerance. I shouldn't have any intolerance. All of my cities are converted. Oh, I'm not producing enough faith. That's, that's why I have intolerance. Very good. You are correct. Guess we'll upgrade this town. Uh... And I guess I'll make it a farming town. Not that it's really going to do much for me, but. Oh, yo, yo. Bow hunters with upgrades. Super strong. Yeah. Humankind is biggest budget ever. Made great graphics, great music, terrible mathematicians and options. Playing the demo millennia was everything humankind should have been. I mean, those are pretty, pretty high prices. All right, we need one more, dude. Okay. Into the forest. They're just chasing me. They're just, just... They're taking this whole army, and they're doing nothing but trying to run me down. And I don't appreciate it. Not in the slightest. I have some Diplo XP. I need 30 to open an embassy. I think I'm going to just save up for that. <gasps> Looks like we teched. Feudalism. Better go straight into organized uh, religion. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a intolerance age. You guys can get innovation and culture in the homeland, which I'm very happy for. 
you guys can pick up Legacy, which maxes out our Wild Hunter stats. And let's see. I could just make all of this gold. And then I could probably turn that gold into like religious brick of rack. Limestone or marble. Logs into wealth. I don't know those are actually worth upgrading. I mean, I guess why not? All right, these guys need to leave me alone. <laughs> I just want to explore peacefully. Good at humankind, the implementation of Neolithic Age is the biggest problem with humankind. Mammoth hunting is the most broken aspect. Actual economy of cities and humankinds is more sure than I would like. The game is more detailed. I like that though. Humankind looks good. It's good UI and diplomacy. Implementation is bad, but idea is cool. I mean, I'm always a firm believer, like if implementation is bad, but idea is cool. It's maybe something that they can buff out over time. It depends on whether or not they have like the resources for it. millennia has some problems there's no doubt about it it's especially got some like buggy exploitive stuff early on um that's not really like a huge problem unless you're playing multiplayer which like they're still working on synchronous turns uh but it's also got paradox as a publisher who i tend to through history like watching because they they're very consistent at like seeing the potential of a game and being willing to put in the money to keep it going now, that is typically for, like, the games that they uh, develop themselves versus just publish. But, you know, it's all related. We got to get some Earth XP, dudes. I'm just realizing we're not leveling Theologian at all right now. We got to do some shifting. What do I need for Earth XP? Can I even make Earth XP right now? Limestone and marble. That's it. Damn, Daniel. You're making 4.5 a turn. I need 30. You guys are going to vibe up there. Ah, you're ready for integration at 38. Okay. Good. We keep exploring. Honestly, kind of shocked Millennia doesn't have proper multiplayer at launch for that price tag. DLC already in the enhanced edition. Hard cap the number of armies you can have in Neolithic Era. Yeah. Second complaint aside for the starting area, should be 25 and they can make it up later with the Paradox DLC model. I mean, yeah. There's certainly an argument to be made there. I think it's, I think they have multiplayer. They just don't have asynchronous multiplayer. I, I'm, I could be wrong on this. Honestly, I'd, I'd have to go to the menu to check. They have hot seat. Yeah, okay. So there is still multiplayer, right? Imperator could have been great. I've been hearing a lot good about Imperator lately. Do I feel this is a Civ killer for you? Just because this is opinion-based. Just curious if you find it fun and equal to more replayability. I mean, like, this is, my, this is only my second campaign. So it's really hard to say at this point. Uh, I don't think it's a Civ killer because I think, let's be real, like Civ has been around forever. <laughs> like Civ is as old as I am almost. Uh, and I don't think it's going anywhere. We're, you know, they're obviously working on Civ 7. We're probably going to see it like next year. So I don't think anything is going to kill Civ at this point. The only thing that's going to kill Civ is Civ itself. And if, you know, their studio does a really, really bad job at managing everything. 
And while I would argue, like, since the dawn of time, uh, it, it, there's always, like, disagreements. People are like, Civ 4 is the best. Civ 5 is the best. Some people are like, Civ 6 is the best, you know? Uh, we obviously all know that the Civilization mod Fall from Heaven is the best civilization. There's an, an undeniable fact on that. But whatever they change in Civ 7 is going to be, like, things some people like and some people don't like. But unless they do something really drastic and, like, just kill their reputation, I, I, I don't think anything's going to kill Civ at this point. But that being said, I think this is a very good Civ-like game. I think they're doing a really good job with it. I like what I see so far. So far, so good. Do I prefer autocracy or feudalism? Probably feudalism. <laughs> Seven streamers on Millennia right now. That's good to see. Have to save the game for another player to load it to their turn. So cloud MP sounds inconvenient. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, so I've played like Civ 6 cloud save hot seat where it's like, you play and then the other players get like a notification or like a discord ping that they play and i'm gonna tell you like that's broken we haven't gotten through a single campaign without it breaking multiple times and having to like completely reset things and and start new games or like do insane amounts of troubleshooting so like civ 6 has been out for how many years and they still don't have their multiplayer working properly so you know i wouldn't be too hard on millennia like being like hey we want to make sure we get it right you know so people say Civ 6 is best. Some people really like Civ 6. Yeah. Generally, if I'm going to play a Civ right now, it's Civ 6. Uh, we are becoming very intolerant people. This happened to me last time where I did not get organized religion quick enough before starting my religion, and it dropped me into intolerance. Now, that being said, I just don't have to go straight into the crisis age. I can let somebody else level up. And that's probably what I'm going to do. Oh, we are making some arts XP. Just extremely little. Uh, I guess these guys have logs. I could build them a paper maker. And a religious scribe in a turn or two. Montpellier already stacking luxuries. Gonna hit another local reform in there. Uh, okay, we've literally built every single thing we possibly can in our capital. And our production is so good that I can produce a crossbow every turn. <laughs> Am I going to war with Sweden? <laughs> It's starting to look like I might be. Good question. You're 11, 11, 50, 20. You're 16, 16, 50, 20. I guess we'll start building stuff. We might as well. Good times were had with hot seats. Civ 2 multiplayer was okay. Dominion 6 is a huge multiplayer community, but probably your average player would lose their mind over how long it takes to play a game. I could imagine that. Yeah, for sure. Dominion 6 is a game I really want to get into, but I couldn't imagine playing a multiplayer. Game of Millennia is 400 turns and takes 40 hours. Why would you want a multiplayer of that? I mean, some people. I, I play in, I have like a D&D &D group where we have like an eight player game. I have a seven player D&D &D group with a one extra person joined in. And we, uh, we have a, a massive Civ 6 game that's just like, you play a turn every couple of days, typically. When it's up when it's up and running, you play a turn every couple of days. Every now and then it just gets slowed to a, a grind though. Uh I need there's only one thing I need in here. And it's faith. So I'm gonna build a bathhouse. Because at least I'll get free sanitation for that. All right. Totally fair. I only play Dominion game single player because I've got no patience. Yes. Crisis Age. I love me a good Crisis Age, don't I?
That's an army. I don't love me no army. Uh, I need one more point for religious scribe. Gold, 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 gold. One day I'll figure out what to do with all that gold. Seventeen, seventeen, eighteen. All right, well, we're catching up a little bit. An age of intolerance would probably be extremely bad for us. But it's hard to say. If you don't go to war with Sweden, the nobles are going to dethrone their king. Uh, that sounds okay. I might be all right with that. That sounds like a them problem, quite frankly. <laughs> Probably should make this guy into a leader. Are you a cavalry leader or do you become a line unit? You become a line unit. All right, I'm all right with that. All right. Uh... Great. Religious scribe. These require plantations? Yes. Which I can't afford at the moment. Uh, and this merchant. See if Germany's willing to peace back out. We'll start with a work camp down here. I guess we'll kind of see where we go. Guys, leave me alone. I just want to be friends. Um, dang nabbit. That means I gotta push this guy like all the way up through here. Can I create another town down here? Yeah. But what is it doing? It'd be really cool if I could put the town right there. If this city grew one square into this scrub land, I could purchase that jungle and then put that city there. And then I could have another really, really good jungle city. So I think that's probably what we're going to have to do. Ah. I also have enough to open an embassy in Greece. I also have enough to spread my religion in a foreign region. I would like to do that, I think. Monastery creates religious texts and arts XP. And obviously I can make it this one right here next to the Sahara Desert. These towns can be leveled up again, so I'm going to let them do that. Gold, 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 gold. I have some plantations to make down here. 
for Flax. Didn't work well for Sweden, historically speaking. They did dethrone their king like a lot. One of them even became a pirate. I mean, that's a good, good choice. What? That was 30 XP I just sent to try and get that embassy open. And he refused it. What a dog. I'm realizing I have a bit of a problem, which is that I have very small armies and the computer I've seen walking around with like level four stacks. So I don't even know if I built a huge army, would I actually be able to do much with it? Leon, can you guys please work the scribe and the paper maker? I clearly need more forests for these guys. And I'm not sure that we're capable of getting it. I have nothing else to make, so I might as well make an army. Could use claim territory, yeah, with the, with the, but I can't use it on any of this because they've actually taken this from me. What I need to do is I need to burn down this city. Dude's up to a level 20 city. This is crazy. He's no right having a city that big when I have a city so bad. <laughs> Boost your state religion in a friendly religion and reduce unrest. I could use my scout. Welcome to Miami. Maybe, maybe that will bring our people closer together. Steam tells you to wait. I pre-ordered the game. Uh, normally, like, yeah, the it'll open up at like 12 or 1, and then it, it takes a while for the rollout to happen. So it might just be a bit of a waiting a bit of an annoying wait, but hopefully not too long for y'all. Am I making a full culture every turn or am I just really slow at kicking those guys off? Clop, 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 clop. Just appeared for you at least. You can start downloading. Nice. I mean, it's not a huge download, so it shouldn't take you very long. That's part of the good news. All right, well, with our religion spread, we might as well keep exploring. I guess I'll do local reforms in Lyon. <clears throat> One thing I really have not figured out is foreign import. You just do that anywhere, hey? Wow. I didn't realize it was that easy. Just import whatever good you need. 
All right, we need a second paper maker then. So that requires me to have an extra log. I should just be able to say here. Now I'm making everything I need. Correct. This place is missing logs. What I could do is rush the bass house and start building a market. Uh, do I need this for anything? Not really. We've absorbed that. Let's grab trash and proof sanitation. You have all the gold you need, so I could just start claiming territory. A couple of options. Installing. Whoop, whoop. Seen the IGN review? Yeah. I mean, IGN's not a very good review site. <laughs> I'm going to be real. I feel like I, I don't trust IGN reviews very much personally. I don't put much stock in them. Right. I got this. This place is a lot. It needs to build before it can really start doing anything. All right. All right. Bad review. IGN and Kotaku basically laughing stocks at this point. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, I would argue that. Are there any good review sites? Yeah, uh, but they all left and became independent. Um, most notably is like... There's a bunch of guys who left Kotaku and formed their own studio called like Phoenix... Something Phoenix? Game journalism died over 10 years ago. I mean, not far off the truth. I'm just realizing how impossible it is to read chat on screen. That might help us a little bit. I mean, I hope everybody enjoys this game. As I said, like, I have generally enjoyed it so far from what I've played. It's got some kinks, for sure, as any game does on launch. But for the most part, I think it's been pretty good. Oh my god, I finally got organized religion. This guy is running spearmen out to try and kill this merchant, and he will succeed at that. I kind of want to go to war with Sweden. Is that wrong of me to say? I've got two armies. Would that be enough? <laughs> Organized religion. Professional army increases army size, but so does discipline. And discipline only takes a single turn. So I'm going to do that one first. If I can have probably a leader, a knight, and two crossbows in each of my armies, I think that would be good. And then maybe we just march them all up from there. Oh, cool. These guys can upgrade to spearmen. Maybe it should be a leader, a knight, a crossbowman, and a spearman.
We'll have to see. We will have to see. All right, all right, I get it. You want me to build more stuff? But what? You need more sanitation because nobody ever wants to work the midden. Got a poop hole out there. I don't understand. Why are we producing faith here? Is it because we're still not producing enough logs? What about now? Still not really producing enough logs. So I guess I need a second paper maker here as well. Alternatively, I could just build something like a holy site. Culture, knowledge, plus four, plus four. Let's just build a large modem. Once we're done building that night, we can put something like that in there. I'm going to build a holy site down here too. Actually, these guys don't have faith yet, which is very confusing because they should. But maybe they're not big enough to require it. So I'm going to give them a market. I would argue game journalism just transferred to YouTube and Twitch. Uh, in large part, yeah. Like most people nowadays actually just get their game recommendations, myself included, from other influencers. So can I bring the intolerance down? I'm actually not sure. I don't think so. <laughs> Paper sites have died, but transferred to YouTube and Twitch to clarify my point. Yeah. I love Civ and I love Paradox Games. Should I buy Millennia? Yeah, probably. Yeah. That's, I mean, that was my opinion. I was like, I love both these genres. Will I like this game? Turns out, yeah. So far, so good. So far, very little complaints. Really don't know what to do with this merchant. I forgot I also have all of these really good bow hunters that I didn't realize are actually better than crossbowmen. These guys are 17.6. These guys are 19.8. Oh. There's also not a city guard here. But he's needed to keep the garrison down. Uh, these guys are actually going to have a problem. That's okay. We can wait it out a little bit. Culture power. That's going to take so long. We unlock discipline. Do I want to go back and get any of these? This would give me arts XP, the Oracle building. And this converts gold into arts XP. I absolutely should get an Oracle. Holy moly. That's how I can get arts XP. All of this gold. I could start converting it big time. So is that something like six minutes of ads? You should not. You should never have more than three minutes of ads. Ask ChatGPT if the game is good. Wish I streamed on YouTube. I mean, all the VODs go on YouTube. I will say that. And they go up within like 24 hours. So enjoy the demo, but I generally like games uh, that I like. I like to think I, if you like strategy games, if you like 4X games, you're generally turn-based games, turn-based tactics games. You're generally in a pretty good spot here. Uh, let's try to make friends with Greece again. I'm actually going to improve relations. Instead of just trying to send them whatever weird embassy thing I did before. Uh, I guess I could just claim territory and then claim territory again and then create a town. 
Oh, you're kidding me. It added this town to Montpellier. God damn it. It jerked me. Damn, that sucks so bad. I'm gonna upgrade Mets because like POW is not really working for me as a town. These guys are maxed out. I could spawn another settler, create an outpost somewhere. Still need something else here. Machines would get me a lot more lumber, which would help me get a lot more wood, which would help me get a lot more religion. I'm running low on housing here and sanitation. Damn, 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 damn. Crossbowmen. Uh, let's get that Earth XP going here first. And then keep exploring. Which game journalism was totally dead? Then I might be able to Google a games related question and not get 50,000 AI junk written articles. Carbo's destroyed my town. Them Burbos destroyed my town. Uh, shoot. I can safely say I didn't expect that to happen. take these archers and I'm going to move them all down here. Let's start keeping stuff safe. Um, and then I think I'm probably going to go to war with Sweden. This seems like maybe a good idea. What makes this game different to other safe types games? Uh, the big one is specialization, in my opinion. Uh, your your towns focus on very specific things instead of being good at everything and then like supply and production chains the economy is way more in depth than Civ is other than that a lot of things are pretty similar ages vary and they make like the way that a, a game paths and snakes through different ages can be very different uh, and depending on like what domains you decide to pick up like dynasties wild hunters theologians your gameplay can change like pretty dramatically i think if you like civ you'd probably like this game i like civ and i like this game because it's a lot like civ and that's really the most logical review i can give of the game <laughs> We'll upgrade this to a large modem. I guess. Why not? 
These guys have faith. These guys don't need faith. So I'm actually making my faith now, which made me wonder, will intolerance drop? And I don't know. I think the key is if you want to start a religion and you don't want to end up in an intolerance age, then you have to like make sure that you have the right buildings in place before you actually start your religion. And seeing as you don't really get any benefits from your religion all that much, it's probably a good idea to do. All right, you guys keep going. You're going to go this way. More Greeks. Honestly, I, I can't imagine we haven't lost this campaign based on just like how in an absolute corner we are, but missionary order. The pious population of France have banded together to form a missionary order seeking to spread new faith and discover new teachings. Monasteries gain knowledge and Diplo XP. Can I turn this into a monastery yet? No, I need to unlock that here. Which means I need to get Earth's XP. I'm going to keep improving relations here. What is this? A little back and forth. I I'm at zero hostility with Germany right now, so they might actually peace out with me. That being said, they also took very, very hostile factions. I should make another city somewhere, but I'm not even well scouted. And I'm so cornered. It's really hard for me to do that. This guy's dead, but he took my outpost in the process. We'll explore some other stuff over here. We'll drop. I guess I wonder, could I just create a new town and create it on my old town? It's much cheaper than the engineering XP. I'm mixing this up with another 4X. I heard the team that made Warhammer 40k Gladius did millennia. No, that's like Slytherin Studios. Seems very different game to me. No combat. Am I mixing up releases? With a Zephon. I haven't even heard of that one. 56k modems. No neutrality with Germany. All right. That jerks. These guys need more food. Probably because their plantation was under fire. Yep, that's exactly why. Uh, so they're making extra flax. I could take that flax and I could turn it into other things. We could press it into cooking oil. We could weave it into wealth. Let's press it into cooking oil. I might as well also, while I'm here, build a uh, d -d 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 lodge so they have lots of housing. And these guys are doing fine on their front right now. I think to respawn prospectors. I guess we could put some gold in them there hills. Dude's grease is huge. All right, what do I need for this war? A knight, two knights. <laughs> this just might be a disaster. I might go in after these guys and just get absolutely like, just completely dumpstered. 
These coals require mines, yes. I don't know why it, these never got built last time. Like, I never expanded out into this territory with the old city. But now it's done it, like, immediately on the first turn. The Zephon comes out in Q3 2024. Okay, okay. Are there wonders in this? Kind of. Um, so there's natural run wonders that you find in the world, like the Sahara Desert or the Borneo Rainforest. And then you can send explorers... Uh, in the early ages, you scout those, and then you find them. If you have a scout, you can actually, like, discover them. And then in later ages, you can send explorers to them, and they can do these, like, adventures that get you a bunch of different stats. Um, a bunch of different, like, domain points, basically. Uh, then there are some special buildings that you can unlock through, like, innovation. For example, in Montpellier, we were able to build the Colossus of Rhodes, which was, like, a unique building. But you get them in like different ways than you would kind of, than you would like think of in like a, a, a Civ game. Built the wrong character there. Ah, well, what's done is done. Uh, you know what, actually, I'm going to put these guys in Rowan because I'm clearly seeing there's a rebellion about to happen there. I cannot believe how forested this map is. We, honestly, we should not have gone Wild Hunters. I feel like we should have went Foresters. We could have pivoted a lot differently. I'm not sure it really matters based on our start. Like, we just got so hard boxed in. All right, you're having a lot of unrest. He's gonna need faith. Eventually. Yeah, right now he's got an unrest problem, so I'm gonna... Build him the mausoleum, actually. Let him grow. He's got an army down there that's going to be sitting with him. 7% terminally online. 1% terminally online. Wow, that did not go very far. Yeah, well. Colossus kind of wonder that can be built. Yeah, yeah. Parion also. Hello. How are you, dude? Oh, I'm going to put that Spearman there, and I'm going to leave the Knight to defend Montpellier. Yeah, this place is in full-blown unrest riots, but it'll go down now that we have an army here. Seattle! We all know the famous Swedish city of Seattle. Being attacked by barbarians. Well, should we go to war? <laughs> An alliance with Greece? What? Are you for real? These guys have been at each other's throats the entire game, and now they've decided to create an alliance with each other? That just happened. Sweden and Greece have formed an alliance. Literally happened this turn. I got to think about this. 
Give me a sec. I'm going to save. What are we going to do here? I have managed to start outgrowing all the Grecian cities. This Swedish super city, for whatever reason, is humongous. And now I can't go to war and cut them off. Which is so highly problematic. I can still grow south, but then I end up bumping into Germany not too long. But we wanted to play tall, so I don't know that we want to grow much more than we are. I was really just hoping to, like, cut down the Swedes' influence. Oh, boy. I wish we knew what was here. <laughs> We're just going to put a big city in the middle of this forest. Because I don't know if we can do much else other than build logs. All right, you get a logging mill upgrade. You guys start getting logging mill upgrades. You're going to keep exploring. I like how we haven't had to deal with barbarians at all in this campaign. It is possible that I could rush this crisis and drop us into an age of intolerance, but I don't think it would be very good for us. What worries me is that if he starts the Age of Renaissance and I put 18 turns into this Age of Intolerance, I'm going to get locked out of the Age of Renaissance. And I need to build things, so I'm going to unlock guilds. I feel very scared. <laughs> That surprise alliance from these two guys who have been at war together the entire game is definitely caught me off guard pretty badly. And I ain't 100 OP sure how to handle it. Uh, what also worries me is if Sweden decides they want to go to war with me right now, it's just going to drag the Greeks into it regardless of how they feel. Okay. Let's head down this coast, I suppose. Well, no, let's head down this coast. Ah, uh, you're probably dead. Ah, uh, let's regroup. <laughs> That was the right choice. I think that was the right choice. Good thing about death is if you enjoyed life, you can look back on it with happy memories. If it was bad, you can thank yourself. Lucky it's over soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's curious because like, because we haven't played much past age six, uh, I don't really know how the end game works. So part of me wonders about like different things like, oh, I have all this gold. Is it possible for me to like pivot to an arts based victory? Or what does that even mean? What does that look like? Should I be trying to, say, spread my religion more effectively before things get too crazy? This guy is about to become terminally online, so Sweden might... I might be able to do some shenanigans with religion. I would love it if I could get an envoy into their city. Oh, 
Pioneer. It needs to be at one of his actual cities, though, so... I'll see if I can sneak him up somehow. A couple of my towns can expand. Mm. Uh, you know what? If I made this a mining town, I could actually get double gold out of it. That might be more worthwhile for me. I want to get this monastery. Because it's buffed up. We had an innovation to buff the monastery. Which also means I should probably be building more outposts. But, but, I'm going to need a bunch of NGXP to build that monastery, so. Is cloud multiplayer working? I don't think so. I'm not sure what... There is a multiplayer, but I, I, I haven't, like, messed around with it at all, so I'm not sure what is and what isn't. Easy peasy, thank you for the follow. I hope your day goes lemon squeezy. Welcome to the agency. As the forest town of Paris. This is going to be a useless town. Because I don't think it can do anything but make production goods. I suppose we'll find out. Marble. I'm going to clay that tile so that it has somewhere that it can build a housing district. And then if I'm smart about that, what I'll actually do is I'll also build a town right here. <laughs> Yoink. Uh, all right. Well, Montpellier is maxed out, so I guess it's going to start building 33 improvement points a turn. Lock my Benevol Universities. For a little bit. How is the game? Dude, McIntyre, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. Wow, we're getting kind of our butts kicked right now, but I'm still liking it. <laughs> uh, all right, I snuck an envoy in with Sweden. How is it that you need to have an embassy to create a treaty and Greece and Sweden have been at war with each other constantly and hated each other and this guy has not been willing to even let me have an embassy in here. Do they even have an embassy? Or a relation anymore? I'm not even sure. They might... That alliance might have just broken. It's a little unclear to me. All right. Some good iron over here. Okay. We... I need to find something to spend my production points on because I just made like... 40 production points from Montpellier. Let's build some mines. You guys need faith. Bad news. You can't have it. Mine, 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 mine. Uh, I, I mean, I suppose in theory, I could build more lumber mills in this deep forest, but what I'll probably end up doing is just chopping this down later in the game. That sounds reasonable-ish. Maybe it's versus player bias. I mean, quite possible. We are playing on master difficulty. 
Ruin just grew a little bit. Uh, and completed its mausoleum, which is what allowed it to grow. It does not have faith. This just seems like the better option, even though it takes a bit more turns. Uh, Leon is growing pretty well here. They're a little short on food, so we could grow with a granary. Montpellier is having a massive sanitation issue now. Along with housing. So I'm going to build a new lodge. At least fix the housing. Uh, the sanitation pretty much I just like require people to work it. At the very least. I could really import in anything here. Culture, culture, production, 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 food and wealth. I guess let's go find one. It's not clear to me, like, if, if importing things actually costs you anything. Just going to get rid of that leader. They're really not doing anything for me. Uh, and then I think I'm going to try to, like, sneak this. <laughs> sneak this guy into Linopig. Right now, I'm like, okay, if I don't make friends with Sweden, I'm going to get crushed. So, Nemke, hello. Happy launch day, dude. <laughs> so I generate 22 wealth here, but I give him, I think, five. Or, I, sorry, I generate 27. Oh, okay. So merchants don't actually benefit you if somebody puts a merchant in your city. You're just like stuck with them. That I didn't realize. Uh, they have completely converted. And it is going up like pretty dramatically now as well. The only thing is, is in the age of Renaissance, things are going to start switching around. So I need to get my religion out like crazy if I want to have any success here. Does Paris need another town? Probably not. Mm, does Ruin need another town? Probably yes. If I claim this... God damn it, dudes. That's really frustrating that you can't, like, decide what region these go to. Oh, Bill's Helper. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I really would have liked that to have been part of this city. Not my capital. So, uh...
There's no way for me to like refund this zone. No, I don't think so. Hmm. All right. Well, what is done is done. I should have claimed down here and then I could have put the second city here and built a farming town. Yeah, that would have been better. It's been millennia since you got a new town. You can undo button. Oh, this is interesting. Region expansion rate. Yeah. Orders on the minimap, armies on the minimap. And faith. Yeah, I don't see an undo button. Personally. All right. All right. Uh, well, we got to do something with this culture. Only units can use it. Quite possibly, yeah. Let's just do local reforms for now. We got guilds up in a turn. That'll give Montpellier something to actually do. Uh, and then I think I'm just going to start going into the next stage, even though we're ways away. And I'm just going to hope it doesn't screw me and delete all my research. I have to assume if you're halfway to entering an age and it switches to like the age of Renaissance, it just puts that research over to the other age. I have to assume that that's the case. Now... Upgrade to a market square, foreign import slots. Upgrade to a great hall, diplomacy XP. I guess we'll start with that. As we keep exploring. You play as barbarians right now. You could Eureka for faster tech. Uh, yeah, you get like a, a, a temporary boost for Eureka. Somebody actually did the math earlier in chat and discovered that like... You're pretty much always better off to take um, local reforms. Unless the Eureka will get you that tech like immediately. You're almost always better off doing local reforms and you actually get more technology from it in the long run. Over the course of five turns, you end up making more tech. I suspect they might boost Eureka. Give it a little buff. You can have a market square. I have 200 improvement points. God damn. All right. These guys have no faith. To be a hunting camp there. There needs to be a plantation here. These guys otherwise are doing like okay. They could use a little bit more food, but I'd like to build turn gold to Earth's XP. Except I don't know where I can possibly put it in this city. I guess I could put it here. You know what? Seeing as I have this location now. Uh, we're currently shy of two gold in order to make that. But I have a bunch of gold mines. So 
So... I can pull them off of that. And then put them in... The offering shrine. That works a little bit better. That'll also start getting me arts XP, which means I can do things like build a monastery. Finally. Okay, it might take a turn to unlock. I think... I think... The next age gives me a new government form. So I'm, I'm kind of just going to hold on to all that government XP. If you're going to for an end era attack, Eureka stronger. Yep. Look at all those fishes. Uh, most of them aren't actually in my territory. All those fishy boys. That guy's out there. That guy's out there. That guy's out there. Alright. I can afford this crazy play. Connects me to Edo. For better or worse. I'm going to max out government XP soon. I can't even spend it on anything. Construction, professional army, medieval university, medieval university. I mean, maybe I just wait for somebody else to start up a different thing and I pick up like medieval university. Converts ingots, converts ingots. I could get, like, better walls. You know what, man? Medieval University is not bad, because then I could also at least put my production towards tech moving forward. Because I certainly don't need more improvement points. You the godless guy? I'm the only god guy currently at the moment. Though that typically changes in the next age. The computer doesn't seem to like making religions in uh, the Age of Kings. They tend to wait until the Renaissance age. Why? Not really sure. Uh, let's expand you and make you a mining town. That'll give me some extra production there. Monastery is an improvement. Building a castle by specializing in outpost provides a cultural bonus. Oh, I misunderstood this completely. Well, I'm going to build a castle then. So we have an improvement called a monastery? Poets converts papers to poems. The jeweler. I am not seeing a monastery anywhere here. I'm not blind, am I? It wouldn't surprise me if I was. The presses make oil. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, cooking oil. 
All right. Well, these guys need faith. These guys really are struggling with sanitation right now. But I, I can't do anything because they're just not working. My only option here is to put people on the middens. Where they pull off the offering shrine. That pulls off large plantation. 162, 156. All right, well, technically that's better for us, so. Sam Lucci. Welcome to the agency. Thank you for the follow. Is the game any good? I like it. I'm having a good time. Personally. I have few complaints. Ooh, my chaos. Uh, let's do some propaganda next time. Improve your relations. I'm going to improve your relations. Don't have an envoy down with them. Can I make an envoy? I should do that. Let us send an envoy to Germany. Click on the field at the castle area. You can select what you want to build and it's castle specific. Oh, I had no idea. Thank you. Castle town plus culture or an abbey spreads religious texts. Can I make an insane amount of these? Yes. Oh my God. I want to build more outposts. So I know outposts is how you do like trading campaigns. For hills. That's exactly it, dudes. I need to build an outpost next to a hill. And it can have a monastery. That is so crazy specific, but I do love it. I don't have enough Diplo XP to do anything here. Oh, you're dead. You're dead for sure. Let's send you home. <laughs> Let's not let my scout just get instantly killed by that huge army. Let us flee from there. Well, nothing to spend my government points on. All right. Trying to learn how to play tall, but it is a tricky, tricky mix. Leon would probably be pretty good getting a workshop up here. Yeah, they're doing pretty good for everything else. So just improving their production and their ability to build, I think would be smart. They have room to build more stuff as well. I try not to like flood them too early. Too bad I don't have skull towers or skull gates. I, I think you need Age of Blood to have that. Uh, I was going to use this propaganda. Because my crisis is getting a little scary. I feel like an artist is something I should start maybe doing, but I'm also thinking about like 
spreading my religion some more. Yikes. Oh yeah, I spread my religion up here, but it basically uh it's being it's being lost every turn. It's growing here, but not very much. Monasteries generate wealth. All capitals increase faith. Large temples generate art XP relative to the population of the region. We're going to have a pretty hard time there. because they're trying to get faith up but bone wall is fun to have age of blood things spread religion to the godless natures do, oh do they do that automatically the bone walls and stuff or because i thought the bone walls were just basically equivalent to stone walls you got them a, a, like a tech air earlier all right we're getting some nice growth over here so become a little farming town ah Aztecs pushing us into the Renaissance. The first artist unit created in this age provides a culture bonus. Social fabric system is unlocked. Scouts can upgrade to explorers and new governments are unlocked. Excellent. Well, I'm still going to push medieval universities, I think, for three turns, because kind of seems like why not? Uh, in the meantime, I do seem to be running some potential problems in my towns. Bit of a riot happening in my capital. What is the next crisis era? Uh, we just missed Age of Intolerance. So I actually don't know what the next crisis is. I won't know until I get the Age of Renaissance. Which I am seeing looks like it reset its counter. So I was, I, I, I was incorrect in saying that that would transfer. A little bit disappointing. Hey, the tropical rainforest. Ruin has finally built the large modem, which is giving it the faith it needs, which is fantastic. It has everything else, so let's go straight for production with the workshop, I think. Seems reasonable. We can grab another hunting camp. We can grab a plantation. Otherwise, you're pretty good. These guys need another midden. Pop it up there. Do we have two people on that mid? Yeah, we do. Wow. Well. Two turns. And we can culture swap. Peaceful revolution. Spend some government as well. Have 15 turns to get some back. Oh, you're right. I can't do that until we tech up. You're right. I'll spawn a settler. Uh, I guess I'll put him over here.
We might as well. You guys stay put. You guys stay put. Uh, you can go this way. <gasps> Greece and Sweden are no longer in an alliance. Germany likes me and I can probably get rid of hostilities. I think. Difficulty are the AIs? No, they're on brutal. Not easy. This is brutal. Master? Bra Master it's called. Sorry. Brutal is Age of Wonders. I'm playing a lot of Age of Wonders lately. <laughs> Has this game got an in-game tutorial? Uh, yes. Yeah, it teaches you some stuff when you first play it. Also, if you've played Civ, it's mostly pretty intuitive. I could get bonus religious faith. about how to spread. If I build a town here, I could build a village here and have it specialized in lumber. Start working on the Age of Renaissance. Uh, this guy has a few other things he can now build. Privy Council and then a medieval university. Okay, you're good, you're good, you're good. Ah. Let's do that. Let's do that. I'm going to build you a lodge. I should not have built you a lodge. I'm going to delete that lodge. I'm going to build you a sawmill there. Because then I'm going to build you logging camps everywhere else. Seeing as that's the only thing that you can make. Uh, and then I'm going to get you a marketplace pretty much right away. 19. Oh, that's a lot. Workshop is also 19. All right. I'll get the, I'll get the granary. It'll grow slowly and then it'll be able to work all these locations. I suppose I could have it punch back uh, like a town. Maybe there. Between the two of these guys. It truly doesn't make any sense. Just the worst designed town ever, but. I'm really just trying to use government XP at this point. <laughs> All right, and we're back down into like barbarian land down this way. Montpellier gets the medieval university. And we keep cruising. Huh. My merchant just got expelled from this city. Ah. 
I suppose war might be the reason why that would happen. That's going to be tricky. That is going to be rather tricky. He is a full age ahead of me right now. Feels like I should be able to reach that explorer in a single turn. But I guess not. Uh, okay. I suppose he's upset because my city has gotten so big. Where are all these guys coming from? Everybody is rejecting my embassies. Explorer. Explorer. All right, they're under siege. They're not attacking me. They're just under siege. We can attack these dweebs. All of my spear units are like, let's just not attack the cavalry. <laughs> guys come in uh and i guess i'll just wait a turn on them before we start moving them in the rest of the way okay we are pretty close to an innovation i need to i tell you what i'm gonna rush we have all this money that i haven't been spending i'm gonna get my chaos down a bit more i have territory i could definitely be claiming right now let's steal this marble With a quarry? Which eventually we'll have enough to do something with. Uh, I can move this army up here and start attacking those explorers. This dude is going to settle a small city. Oh, the war. There's always got to be a war. All I wanted was peace, Sweden. I never did anything against you. And here you are, marching your stacks through my forests. Towards my cities. So rude. I don't know why I took a city guard into that fight. That was a whoops. Got the unrest in all of these places is just like climbing super rapidly. Knights, crossbows, knights, knights, long swords. So he just has one more unit per army than I do. He took professional army. Is all. Whether or not that's something I can easily survive is a different question. 230 points there. Oh my goodness. And a 209 down this way. I don't love... 
love the way this is looking at the moment. Uh, it seems that he really... Those are pikemen, mostly. Cavalry, cavalry. Uh, I don't know what is best to send at him. Probably bow hunters. Okay, all right. We'll start making their way back up, I guess. Is it possible to nuke people in the late game? I'm not sure, honestly. I haven't gotten to the late game stuff. Uh, we were limited to the first six ages before. So we're just kind of like coming up on that limit now. A battle in the wilderness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is really bad. Oh, I don't have a chance here. He massively outnumbers me. I can at least, like, uh, force march that army and attack him again. And make sure that that one stack is destroyed. Then these guys are almost certainly toast. Maybe with some clever force march shenanigans, I can hold the line a little bit. Dude, I wish this blinking arrow here would not be here. Like, yeah, I got 75 improvement points. I don't really need to be spending them in that many places. Does it only show up when you have, like, an unworked tile, I guess, maybe? That's probably it. I grew the coffee, and it was like, work me. Work me harder, daddy. All right, I suppose more bow hunters. It's very problematic because I also need armies in these cities right now to deal with the unrest. Leon has made a workshop. I better build a watch. I better rush a watch, actually. And then... Maybe an encampment? I'm clearly going to need an army right now, so... Oh, God, they do so much damage. I don't love it. Warrior monks A brotherhood of monks have become agitated By the teachings of another temple They ask for training and resources to defeat their enemies Unlocks Naganata Requires a barracks Requires professional army Ah man These are like souped up anti- Cav units. That's exactly what I need right now. I think I have to stick with the, the tech upgrade first. Okie dokes.
You guys need a leader. You guys need to heal. You guys need to heal. Uh, crossbow, crossbow, pike, pike. Taken, heavy damage, dealt, light damage. Paris doesn't have walls either. Of course, it's like a brand new town. I mean, the knights have to be my best option for what to make here, right? Local reforms coming in three. I ought to get the research on track. It'll help a little bit, but... An explorer! I got flanked by an explorer, and he almost destroyed my army. Good grief. Sweden is really giving me trouble here. Um, ba -da -doo. you need like two city guards right now. We have a capital attack. We can use on them. Large temple gains arts XP based on the region's population. I think that pretty dramatically increases our XP here. Uh, we're also going to have a rebellion very, very soon. My vassal just stopped being my vassal. Their border is red. Any idea why it's on the Bronze Wage? One you founded. Did it rebel or did barbarians take it over, perhaps? Uh, sometimes there's little notifications right up here. Like, up up there. Uh, and they'll tell you about, like, any events that happened on the last turn, like combat maybe you didn't see. Would be my best guess. Okay. I'm going to have a really hard time holding off against these guys. I suspect the Swedes are going to push us into a full downfall here. Because my armies just aren't tough enough to take them out. I can't believe that didn't kill them. Ah, oh, there's another army. No, I lost it too. Totally, absolutely buckled. Walls not here anymore. It goes straight to keep. Keep is way too expensive to make. I actually need to just make city guard because otherwise my capital is going to going to full rebellion. 
I also need to get rid of chaos. Which I don't think is going to happen. Probably ink swapped with barbs. Capital can get like 10 to $15 from production of research product in the city. Uh, yeah, we did just unlock medieval universities like for that reason. Rebels, four turns. Rebels, four turns. Army destroyed. Leader, knight, bow hunter. I'm no longer making enough faith in this city. Kind of a situation where I might as well just like throw myself at their troops as much as I can. Um, wow, all of that's destroyed. Instantly raises all the parts if you take the city, I see. Why did I lose this location? Did I have a s village there? Oh, maybe I did. I didn't think I did, but maybe I did. Uh, I'm just going to have her come up through here. Okay. Maybe not. Everyone's got a second city guard. Is that enough? Yes. Thank God. <laughs> uh, we are having faith problems. So I guess it's got to be a holy site. I think Sweden's pretty much going to buckle me here. They are pulling a lot of guys out. Here's the one advantage that I might have is that I can produce units really, really fast. I lost a bow leader and a hunter. Oh, yeah, he killed me here completely. There's not really a good strategy I can do. Yeah, no matter what I throw my, like, no matter what I throw at him, he's just going to out-army me here. What I should have done probably earlier on was try to appease Sweden and get on their good side. Aha. I, I, this, so this is what happened. He started his own religion. He started Buddhism. And that's why he went to war with me. Like, I can reinforce those guys. They're still going to get destroyed in one turn. He's also using reinforcements. And somehow he's pushing up from the south. I don't understand how he has, like, pikemen surrounding me on literally all sides. Yikes. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's nothing I can do here. All right. Well, we learned some good lessons. Bloody Bud Bud Buddhist Swedes. Buddhism's waging war. Some sects have traditionally in the past. It's not unheard of. All right, so this was our first attempt at playing tall. Let's try to look at kind of some of the things that we did right and some of the things that we did wrong. What worked for us and what didn't so that we can adjust next time. Can we use the truce the cultural power? Wow, I didn't know that was an option. So that's something we could look at for next time. For certain. I'm curious how playing tall works properly. Uh, one big issue, I got really caught up in this, and I did this exact same thing last time because I didn't understand how religion works. But it's about, like, you really shouldn't found a religion until you have religious buildings. Because otherwise you get stuck in the Age of Intolerance, no matter what you do. And you're just, like, fighting. All your cities take penalties the moment you start a religion in them. Unless you have the buildings in there to get faith. So starting a religion early is not necessarily a good idea. And can actually pretty actively harm you. This city... Did not come online until this forestry place happened. And then it blew up. Super huge, in fact. So, I think that starting next to an optimized forest zone is really, really powerful. Because it gives you so much early production that you can really, really take advantage of it. Alternatively, if you started next to a lot of hills, uh, you could go like engineering god kings and you could also build up that way because they get a lot of xp as well outposts seem like there's something that it well a i didn't understand how to build <laughs> these places around them i would have used them definitely a lot more and not like built them right next to the sahara desert uh but it's worth considering what kind of outposts you want to build and like what kind of things you have like knowing that a monastery can only be built on hills for example would dramatically change the places that i would build something like that weirdly enough something like an outpost right here could have been really powerful because it would have had three hills on its side if i'd opted to like put my city somewhere different Understanding is wild hunters really good for rushing with bow hunters and the tall play has something to do with getting cultural bonuses on meat goods from somewhere in the demo. I never played it for myself. Uh, we actually have the cultural bonus from meat goods. We got it from, I think, an innovation. I want to say an innovation got it to me. Innovations are really, really game changing. Uh, this is the one thing I certainly have noticed in this campaign is how important innovations are and how valuable they are. And I guess it's because there's like not a lot of really good ways to get innovation points. The cutting edge cultural power or unlocking certain texts and ideals. Interesting. Uh... If you want to build tall, I think you have to go engineering. We went exploration. We went exploration into arts. And I think you actually have to go engineering into... Probably diplomacy. Because that allows you to get merchants. It allows you to... Here's the thing. I think if you're tall, you don't have a big army because you don't have a lot of territory to cover. And so you need to have strong diplomacy. These are my early takeaways. If you end up in an Age of Hero, you can get some really early arts and you can kind of like shift into that. Age of Heroes is really good. Really? 
we're gonna enter the age of renaissance so i'm gonna i'm gonna pass a turn here so we can at least see what the tech is like uh this doesn't really matter I just want to see the, the tech tree. Now okay, getting lunch. I missed it. Thanks for telling me. Yeah. Mound builders is the canonical tall play, but you need a lot of grassland. I think mound builders or, or God Kings, I think was the other one. Social fabric system, new governments and expeditions. Dragoons, explorers, guard reserves, the grand theaters. Yeah. So you start, you do start moving into a lot more earth space stuff in this zone printing presses knowledge and luxury ah so if you wanted to you could have your religious stuff and then you could shift this over to printing presses uh because i believe yeah in the age of enlightenment you st you um your religion start draining the age of alchemy oh i've never not seen that social fabric insights one out of five that's pretty cool Heresy charges, the age of heresy. Lifting towers, poor houses, housing and wealth. Trash heap, there's the trash. Waterworks, also sanitation. Social fabric wildcard, harbors and boats. Domestic export slots. Textile mills. This is also interesting. The domestic export slots. So you can eventually start trading the stuff that you make. So if you're making like really high level things like bread, for example, you could start exporting it and selling it probably for a lot of money. Gunpowder and then machinery. Uh, it, it really does seem like it's crazy that clear cut is all the way up here in the age of renaissance i find this to be like a bizarre choice that being able to cut down trees takes this long the clay mine yeah so i think either you basically you go f if you want to go high production you either have to go like hard into trees or hard into like mining and hills and if you don't have either you're stuck with basically clay pits like if you're just in a bunch of grassland, you're stuck with clay pits and making uh, making bricks. Hmm. Okay. There's not a lot of like. Um, I see money. We see like sanitation. There's not a lot in in here in like regards to like arts, or culture, or diplomacy, engineering. None of these are really getting like huge boosts in here. Trying to get good. Thank you for the follow. I'm trying to get good myself. Welcome to the agency. Devs want you to take naturalists if you have a ton of trees. I think that choice can put off a lot of safe players. Yeah, it's a bit weird because also like if you're, it feels like when you get, you can kind of get like stuck in the trees a little bit. Lost in the trees as it were. Machinery. All furnace types generate wealth. Bonus production for coal. Trebuchets, clock towers, which make luxury. Tinkerers make all sorts of stuff. Okay. All right. If you go engineering, there is a bit of a war path. Potentially. Amass wealth and establish strong diplomatic relations. Rule with feudal lords known as Daimo, who make regions more effective. Ah, so this is like a vassal. Vassalized minor nation. Okay. Huh. So the Shogunate's really kind of uh, an interesting choice because he's, he's d diplomatic, but he's like aggressive diplomacy. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think the God King, like, if, if you have a lot of hills, God King Dynasty makes sense. If you've got a lot of trees, naturalists. If you don't, mound builder. This is, if you want to be big, those are the choices. I don't think wild hunter... I mean, I guess it's scrubland is the idea, but it does feel like exploration is just like the wrong choice, even with naturalism, right? Reduce cost of expansion into forests. Culture from foraging unimproved forest tiles. Like that's not particularly great. In fact, I would argue that's like really quite bad, especially as a 70 point skill at like the fourth tier. Like if you have forest tiles, you, you're either probably working something else or you're putting lumber mills in there. Only if you are somehow completely surrounded by forests would I, t would I recommend taking that. Unlocks burial mounds. Works for two culture. Also generates sanitation. That's kind of nice. Farms are cheaper. Regions upgrade. Two specialists that generate sanitation per adjacent burial mound. Oh, town specialization that generates sanitation per adjacent mound. Oh, okay. So that's actually very interesting then for if you want to go tall. Because this gives you very early sanitation. Very much so. I, I, that's, that's, that's pretty big. Reduce the cost in expansion of grasslands. 50 times 50% 50 food needed per population. Capitals require half as much food for pop. All right. So these are obviously the tall guys. With like. If you have a lot of hills, go God King Dynasty. Otherwise, go the other guys. So engineering is how to play tall. I got really goofed out with exploration. I also, I don't know why I did this. I just kind of got like blind mode, but I got like, I realized Sweden was here. And then I sent all my guys up trying to get around Sweden to explore. And it took me a really long time to just breach this one tile of forest. I saw mountains, mountains, and forest, and I just thought for some reason it would be all forest down here. So I didn't expand. I could have expanded down here way sooner. Now, that being said, we got really bad positioning, really bad start on this map. It's potential I could have pushed for Edo early, but like, I think we would have struggled. Germany would have still beaten us there, I think. Burial Man has an innovation to provide plus one improvement point per Burial Man. You don't have to work it. That's pretty good. Aggressive Diplomacy, otherwise known as War. If you take Naturalist Forest Movement, the game applies regular Forest and Deep Forest Movement reductions to Deep Jungle. Let's you move through Deep Forest for minus 25. You can travel 12 tiles through Deep Forest in one turn. That's pretty amazing. I feel like they probably patched that. Industry is the way forward. Is exploration a trap? If you're an island nation, maybe not. Strong early ships. I could easily see an argument to be made for early ships, early explorers. Barbarian neutrality. Uh, if you pull into like uh, some of the like ages of blood and stuff like that, barbarian neutrality is huge. Obviously, that's like before this unlocks, but. Naval exploration vessel that can create explorers. Bonus knowledge and exploration XP per completed expedition. Obviously, that's pretty huge. With an extra 25% expedition base chance.
Move any unit to their camp and have them join your nation and share their research. The assimilation clears the tile and grants a reward. Oh, this is just like the, the empty cities. Yeah. I, depending on your start and stuff, you could go pretty heavy on explorers. I wish I could see the age six stuff right now. And what does Olympian get? Number of nations you've opened negoti negotiations with. Hippodrome. Cheaper envoys. Faster envoys. Well, oh, excuse me. Better defense on units. Host Olympic Games culture power to get a variety of XP rewards and an additional 300 wealth. Okay. Okay. So if you didn't want to grow a lot with towns, um, Olympians is not an actually bad choice either. Because it would give you some abilities here that obviously like the Olympic Games are better based on how many friendships you have. Now that being said... Like, uh, yeah, so uh, the moment we hit Age of Renaissance, I hit minus 40 with everybody because of religious differences. And that's, I think, what really killed me here. We are viewed as a warmonger. I really don't understand why Greece and Sweden um, entered diplomacy early, and I think that that was... Highly problematic. Sweden is actually Catholicism. Greek is Buddhism. Sweden took God King Spice Merchant. I think this is a very good combo. Especially with the Imperial Dynasty. And of course, we have other governments and stuff here right now, too. Uh, the last thing I just want to look at, expansion cost, research cost, upkeep cost, improvement cost, wealth per turn, unrest reduction. It's kind of funny to be like engineering with uh, improvement cost because you're probably going to have like an unlimited amount of improvement points if you go engineering. Uh, one thing for sure I didn't do early enough was... Uh, and, and this is something that I'm like really trying to click into is spawn settlers has a cooldown, which means cast it every time it's off cooldown. Because the vassal state is better than no vassal state. And especially because like war doesn't typically break out very early. I think you just have to be like super aggressive with early vassals and getting them out as like in as many places as possible. Do you need a dock to make a utility boat? I have a dock. I got a utility boat for free. And it allowed me, I think, to build dugout canoes. I think that's it, yeah. Uh, I didn't, uh, you know what? I didn't build a uh, um, sailing. Utility boat is back there. It's just like a tech I didn't unlock. Olympic Games can be mid max to provide hundreds of XP. Yeah, expansion coast, <laughs> OP. Yeah, we had some, like, weird stuff as well. I, like, uh, one thing I really do kind of feel is, like, hunting camps aren't good. Uh, uh, to start with. They give you a nice little boost, like, right away for the meat and the bone. But, like, in comparison to everything else that gets upgraded into large plantations, large pastures, large ranches, better mines, better woodcutting... I don't know if hunting camps have an upgrade. They certainly don't early on. And 4X games are typically about like how fast can you snowball at the beginning. And if you fall behind, you lose. Not having production chain is both really weird and really limits them. Yeah. I mean, it is 
Well, it's not the only way to get meat, because pastures also get you meat. But it is like a good way to get meat, which does let you go into the kitchen. But the kitchen doesn't happen until like uh, uh, age four, I think. I, I think of all the things that you can start next to, hunting camps is the worst. And I would argue, I think for that reason, Wild Hunters is also the worst. You get bonus improvement points and you get bonus food. But like, if it was a farm tile and you could just have meat or uh, wheat and then turn that into bread, you're going to end up getting better from it. So... These are kind of my early thoughts on a tall play style. Definitely we got spanked this time. But that's okay. That's why we live. That's why we live and learn. Gah. Uh, we're going to come back to Millennia tomorrow. We're going to try out a, a fresh new campaign. And uh, see whether or not we can do a little bit, be little bit better as builders. Uh, checking out more of the engineering trees, I think. And focusing on a tall style playthrough. Uh, just because we've done the big war already. Uh, so thank you for joining me in the meantime, and we'll be back here tomorrow with more. Stay tuned.